<laughs> hey, my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Mozart. Let's continue our DP600 learning journey. Today, I want to show you how to leverage two very important concepts in DAX, and this is variables and iterator functions. So, stay tuned! Let's kick it off by explaining the concept of variables. Funny enough, even though we call them variables, once you set the variable value, you can't change it anymore. So, it would make more sense to think of variables as constants, in terms of programming languages concepts. But, as they are called variables, let's stick with that naming. As a DAX newbie, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you don't need variables. Simply said, why would you care about the variables when your DAX formulas consist of one or two lines of code? However, as time goes by and you start writing more complex calculations, you'll start to appreciate the concept of variables. And when I say more complex calculations, I mean using nested functions and possibly reusing of the expression logic. Moreover, in many cases, variables may significantly improve the performance of your calculation, as the expression will be evaluated by the engine only once, instead of multiple times. Finally, using variables enables you to easier debug the code and verify results for certain parts of your formula. Here is a simple example of using variables in your DAX code. As you may notice, defining variables requires the usage of the var keyword before the expression is evaluated and assigned to a specific variable. Of course, the example above is fairly simple, but let's imagine that we want to display year-over-year -year variance as a percentage. We can write a measure like this. The first thing to spot here is that we are repeating exactly the same logic and the same expression for calculating the sales amount for the previous year. We could have written the same measure this way. I guess we can agree that this version is way more readable and easier to read and understand. As I said, this was a fairly basic formula. You can just imagine the impact of using variables in more complex scenarios with nested functions. Finally, keep in mind that variables can be used both in measures and calculated columns. The last thing I want to show you is related to iterator functions in DAX. Unlike aggregators, which aggregate all the values from the specific column and return a single value, iterators apply expression for each row of the table they are operating on. Therefore, the first difference between the two is that iterators need at least two parameters to work. The first is always a table that they need to iterate on. This can be both physical or virtual table. And the second is the expression that needs to be applied for every row of that table. The most common iterator functions are actually the relatives of the aggregator functions, such as sumx versus sum, averageX versus average, maxx versus max, and so on. However, it's an interesting fact that aggregator functions are internally translated by the engine to the iterator functions too. Please keep in mind that whenever you want to write an expression that includes more than a single column, you must use iterators. The key thing to understand with iterator functions is the context in which they are operating. As they are iterating row by row, the expression is evaluated in the row context, similar to the calculated column DAX formula. However, the table is evaluated in the filter context, which means that if, let's say, there is an active filter on the fact reseller sales table to show only the data from the year 2019, the final result will include the sum assuming that you are using some x iterator function over the rows from the year 2019. If you like this video, please make sure to click this like button down below. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the latest features and learning paths for DP600 and other Microsoft Power BI and Microsoft Fabric videos, make sure to subscribe to Data Motor channel. See you soon!